welcome. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amy, would you take roll call, please? Mrs. Tobby. Here. Mr. Gilbert. Here. Mr. Detzel. Here. Mr. Heather. Here. Mrs. Slattery. Here. Okay, we'd like to start with our mission statement. The Northwest Local School District will create a responsive learning community where all students are valued, challenged, and guided along a pathway to success. And I need a motion and a second to adopt the agenda for this evening. So moved. Second. Yes, it's five to zero. The first item is an executive session. This would be to move into executive session to consider the employment of a public employee or official. Superintendent recommends the board approve the motion to move into executive session as listed. I need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. I'll put Nancy for second. We don't need a motion to return from executive session. Oh, okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we amend the agenda for this evening to put under other items um, discussion and possible action on the superintendent's contract. Second. Mr. Heather. Aye. Mr. Detzel. Aye. Mrs. Dalby? No. Mr. Gilbert? No. Mrs. Slattery? Aye. I'm just going to say this now. <laughs> um, while I appreciate and respect Daryl's dedication and hard work for our district, after much thought and prayerful consideration, I believe that we should have put the work in to end the effort to move forward with our superintendent interview process. I have seen many successes in our buildings over my years on the board, and I agree and see the progress that we have made in many areas. Uh, for example, this past year, I witnessed successful adjustments in the transportation department, as well as improvements in our third grade reading proficiency. I am not here to discount the hard work that so many of our administrators, teachers, and staff members put in each and every day. However, we have seen a decline in our report card results across multiple metrics. Our Hanover Climate and Culture Survey results have also indicated a downward trend over the last two years. Many long-term invested families and staff have chosen to leave our district in recent years. Both bond issues have failed miserably. 
Earlier this school year, a staff member at Corning High School was brutally assaulted by a student. The administration was there long into the evening. In light of these events, I believe it was essential for Daryl to personally respond or delegate support to assist the Corning team during this tragic event. We continue to be reactive in addressing district concerns and communication to our stakeholders. We must move forward to right size our district and come up with innovative ways to bring our community together for the success of our students. I recognize change is difficult and uncomfortable, but also necessary to move our district forward. My commitment as a board member is to the students and staff of our district and to the taxpayers of our community. As the only parent up here, I am deeply committed to the future and success of this district and to the students. I understand the urgency and importance of fulfilling the role of superintendent. However, making sure that we make the right decision for the leader and CEO of our district is what we were elected by the community to do. Thank you. Nicole, do you want all of us to sure. address that this now. Discussion before it passes. Okay, um, folks, we got a person here who's been with our district 25 years, Daryl. 24. 24. There's 110,000 public school teachers in the state of Ohio, and in 20 years ago, I don't remember, but Daryl was selected out of 110,000 teachers to win the very, very prestigious Milken. Uh, educator of the year award each state gets one person um, I think that tells you something about Daryl smarts and his ability to get things done he won $25,000 and if it had been me I'd have probably put it into a new Mustang or something um, Daryl donated it back to his classroom um, we've got a lot going on right now we've got buildings falling down um, Darrow has evolved tremendously since we did the evaluation back in January. Transportation last year was an absolute mess. And this year, I don't think I had more than one or two calls about it. And so there's, when weighing the good and the bad, there's so much more good to bring and continue with somebody who knows the inner workings of our district versus bringing in somebody who would start literally is a trainee about the Northwest School District and, and go from there. So because of that, I am more than happy to see Daryl finish out his career here for the next three years. Nancy, did you say? Yeah, um, initially when I ran for the school board, I was pretty naive about the school board and the, how things pr um, went. But in the past six months, I've gained some knowledge, but I still have a substantial learning curve. The one thing I've learned is that this district feeds off of rumor, gossip, and anecdotal stories. Soon embers turn into full-fledged fires. However, these rumors, gossip, and anecdotes only become gospel and punitive to other people if they originate from a select group of people, which I've yet to define who those people are. Starting out, I was not a huge fan of Daryl Yader. He leans more to the left, and I lean more to the right. Um, but in order for the district to improve, we need to work together. And I may not approve of all or support all of his actions, but I believe he is a truly intelligent man that has dedicated his to career to the Northwest Local School District. He may not be the charismatic personality that some desire, but he has the tools to do the job. In the words of Mark Gilbert, he brings an immeasurable set of skills to the district. He is approachable, collaborative, goal-driven, and growth-oriented. His vision for the future of the district is impressive. One area which Mr. Yader has come under fire for is teacher retention. The buzz is that all the new teachers are leaving and all the teachers are leaving. The attrition rate for Northwest Local School District this year is 11% with the 89% retention rate. Last year, the attrition rate was 10% with the 90% retention rate. According to the Council of Great City Schools, composed mainly of large, composed mainly of large school districts across the country, the median retention rate is 78%. The upper quartile is 84% retention, and the lower quartile is 71% retention. Obviously, we are exceeding the median quartile and are in the upper quartile. According to Sanya Kraft at Think Impact in an article on 328.24, the article stated that new teachers, those being less than five years of experience, are leaving education at a rate of 30% per year. 
according to teachercareercoach.com, new teachers are two and a half times more likely to quit than tenured teachers. 86% of teachers reported seeing far more teachers quit and retire since 2020 than ever before in their careers. The pandemic caused the largest drop in education employment ever. That's including educators and staff. In March of 2020, public school employees dropped from 8.1 million to, to 7.3 million in just two short months. That's May of 2020. That's a huge gap and a lot of, of employees to make up for. According to um, the teacher outside the box, to, according to Teach Outside the Box, game changers to keep new teachers are leadership at the school, collegiality among teachers, professional development, and community support. We definitely have professional development, collegiality, I don't know how that is at each school, but that's up to the teachers at that school to promote that. In the leadership at the school, Daryl has been working on helping principals become the leaders of their school and not just the top teacher. Um, the community, there's always efforts to get community support, but this is the most people I've ever seen at a school board meeting. And I think most of these people out here are teachers. Um, there was reference to this uh, goal to, to retain teachers in Daryl's one plan, one team presentation that he gave at uh, last month's board meeting. Another area in which Mr. Yader has been crucified is academic achievement. However, if you look at the state report card, the district was not spectacular when Mr. Yader took office on August 1st of 2020. The 2018-2019 report card showed an achievement grade of a D, a progress grade of a C, a gap closing grade of a B, a graduation grade of a B, and early literature or early, early literacy grade of a D. So then we had 2019 and 2020 and the state recommended no scores for that year. 2021, 2021, again, the state said no scores for that year. So our first year of school status post pandemic, our achievement grade was a two, our progress grade was a three, our, graph, our gap grade was a four, our graduation grade was a four, and our literacy was a two. Those are pretty comparable statistics to pre-pandemic grades. That's a pretty remarkable skill when you consider the next statement. According to Thomas Kane in an article by Samantha Lane Petras dated 5A to 2024 in the Harvard Gazette, the national average was students lost a half grade level in math and a fourth grade level in reading over the pandemic. In areas with more poverty, up to two grade levels were lost. So the Northwest Local School District did as well overall the first year post-COVID as it did the last grade of pre-COVID year. And as you know, Daryl was not the superintendent the last pre-COVID year. If you've been listening to the student achievement reports at recent school board meetings, you would have to believe that the report card that comes out in September will be better. And I think a big factor in this is going to be that the, the district initiated the new reading program, the early literacy program, which I think is gonna make a huge difference. And again, achievement was, an, was one of the main topics in the one plan, one team initiative presented at the 6-3 board meeting. The next area Mr. Yader has been blamed for is chronic absenteeism among students and teachers. Absenteeism is two times the pre-pandemic rate nationwide. Um, according, according to Mr. Kane, part of the absenteeism issue with students is one, families are out of their routine, two, kids and parents are accustomed to being at home during the week, and three, parents are not really realizing the setback absences have on their child's education. The absenteeism of students makes difficult classrooms for teachers. Teachers may have a third of the classroom not on track with the current day's assigned lesson. This produces frustration and burnout for teachers and leads to absenteeism. Mr. Yader has prescribed a plan to reduce absenteeism following House Board 410 regulations. This is also a major component of the one plan uh, objective to reduce absenteeism 5% per year and to have a 15% reduction by 630 of 27. There has been approximately a 3% decrease this past school year in student absente absenteeism by preliminary data. We don't have the final results on that yet. Another area that he has come under attack for is failed levies. But according to uh, the OSBA, more than half of all levies, 45 out of 93, failed in the March 2024 election. Merely, only a near 17%, six out of 37 levies that were proposed for new tax money were approved in the March 2024 election in the state of Ohio. The belief is that two factors are responsible for these failed levies. One is the inflation that we're experiencing 
and two is the culture war that we're experiencing. Um, this is not a Daryl Gator issue. This is a statewide issue. Um, another area of contention is discipline. And according to Heather Hill of Harvard Graduate School of Education, students forgot how to be students during the pandemic, which not only led to decreased academic achievement, but also increased behavior problems. I am not an advocate of SLE and restorative practice, practices. I believe as a district, we still need to work on this matter. We had a district discipline board meeting in March of 2024. It was largely a futile meeting. I felt a lot of it was just propaganda for the media. I questioned the board vice president as to why the breakdown of data was not given by Mr. Gehring and was told we didn't want to get deep into things with the media present and took some slides out. I expressed through an email to the board president my dissatisfaction with the meeting. I was told an executive meeting with teachers would be scheduled. Nearly four months later, nothing has happened. However, the data presented by Mr. Gehring at that meeting suggested improvement. Out of school suspensions were down 15%. Fights and assaults were down 14%. THD violations were down 38%. And total office referrals were down 5%. These are modest improvements, but nonetheless, they are improvements. Additionally, Mr. Additionally, Mr. Yader is addressing this further in his new One Plan, One Team under the Behavior Supports Tier 1. This will be modified for each school's needs. There will be standard procedures with clear expectations and consequences. This should align similar expectations across classrooms and decrease behavior issues and the need for the use of the reset and red zone, which a lot of people complain about. The next issue has been the claim that droves of students are leaving the district for private schools. According to an article by Laura Hancock located at cleveland.com on three, uh, in March of 2024, this is simply not the case. The 10 public school districts that saw the largest increase in vouchers in Ohio in the past year were one, Kirkland Local at Lake County. They had no prior vouchers the previous year and had 60 this year with a loss of 21 students. Then we had Avon Local School District in Lorraine County. They, they had a 50-fold increase with 537 students receiving vouchers. They only lost 110 students. Three Rivers Local School District here in Hamilton County had a 52-fold increase to a total of 832 stu students with a loss of 124 students. Hudson City District in Summit County had a 35-fold increase for a total of 177 students with a loss of 99 students. Indian Hill here in Hamilton County had a 32-fold increase to 163 total vouchers with a loss of 25 students. Loveland School District in Hamilton County had a 28-fold increase to 561 students with a loss of 100 students. Revere District in Summit County had a 26-fold increase to 131 vouchers with a loss of 15 students. New Richmond and Claremont County had a 25-fold increase to 126 vouchers with a loss of absolutely no students. Kenston County, or Kenston School District in Geiga City had a 24-fold increase to 122 vouchers with a loss of 19 students. In Olentangy School District in Delaware County had a 23-fold increase to 170 uh, or 713 students, but they actually gained 489 students. So Northwest Local School District isn't even in the top 10 in the state of, of, of vouchers. Um, enrollment in 2023 to 2024, it looks like the preliminary data for 24-25 is going to pretty be, be pretty much on target with the same number. Uh, furthermore, 49% of the 500 largest school districts have faced superintendent leadership changes since March of 2020. The reasons given for this are politics, the culture war, and blameless inexperience. As many other people have retired from the school district, so have principals, which have been a, a main uh, place for people to find superintendents. Um, what, they have, what, I have, what has been said in this article by Michael Collins is that, to be quite honest with you, if we're going to find the best leaders, we're going to have to cultivate them. The, the role of superintendent has completely changed since 2019. According to him, he said, you used to have to be able to, to walk and chew gum as a superintendent. Now you have to walk, chew gum, run, and then run a marathon to be superintendent. Um, COVID was uncharted territory for a seasoned superintendent, much less a new superintendent. COVID changed the superintendent job forever. COVID brought changes to industries across the nation. Most are still trying to climb out of the trench. 
education is no difference. There is a time when delayed gratification in patients is needed. The effects of COVID are not quickly repaired. After talking with experienced school, member, school board members in a seasoned outside superintendent, I believe the district would be more severely damaged by bringing in a new, super, new superintendent unfamiliar with the district. I support Mr. Yader to continue as superintendent. He has had recent accomplishments. One, he led teacher negotiations and settled those in two and a half days. Two, he reviewed end of the year data with each building to, to monitor its progress. Three, he developed the one plan, one team uh, directive. Four, he led and coordinated response to the Corrine Elementary facility issues. And five, he led the response to the simultaneous bomb, threat, bomb threats at several of the local of our schools. He has continued to work tirelessly for the district right up in post his resignation. Um, I received an email from somebody telling me that I campaigned on Mr. Yader not being here. Not true. I campaigned, campaigned on each better achievement and improved discipline, and that is what he has presented. We have data that supports that. And you know what? You can fall for all the, the hype out there about how terrible this is and how terrible that is, but do your own research and look into things, and don't believe every rumor that you hear. So we're actually, speaking of research, um, we're second highest uh, projected for 24 participants um, in the um, Parochial Ed Choice Program. So, but that's not and I do appreciate year. what you quoting magazines. But I would encourage you to visit the schools, talk to the teachers, see what's Nicole, going on in the classroom. I gave you a list of dates that I could visit the schools not early me. last that year. That goes through Daryl. Yes, I did, and I can show it to you. And you said you would coordinate with Daryl for that. That goes through I have Darryl. had a visit with the, through the schools. Okay. I have had a visit. Just encouraging you. And I will continue to do that. Okay. But just because these are from articles and that this COVID is a nationwide impact. I understand that. And it affects these, this district too. These are our teachers and our students, and this is who we are concerned with, not an article that was written in Cleveland. So that's all. I'm not going to respond. Well, that, that's your opinion, but it's a data that applies to all school districts who have suffered through COVID. Okay. My turn? Sure. Jim, do you need it? Go ahead. So I first want to start by saying that I have taken my role as a Board of Education member very seriously for the past seven years. The decisions and votes that I have made have always revolved around what is best for our children and what is best for our community. To be honest, I've struggled because the processes and methodologies to run in a public school district greatly varies from how conventional private organizations would run. I have strived to understand the differences, however, there comes a point where public education needs to start adopting sound business practices if they are to survive. Northwest Local was at an impasse. Our five-year forecast has not progressed in a positive direction in well over 10 years. We have two renewal levies coming up, and if these do not pass, we will need to cut $25 million out of a $130 million budget. This will be devastating. Currently, Mr. Yader has been our superintendent for th almost three years and our assistant superintendent for several years prior to that. His influence uh, has been present for a substantial amount of time. Northwest Local was in the most dire position it has been in, and there are no answers for our immediate future. Daryl Yader may not be responsible for all the current trials we are going through. However, he has not any, brought any new or innovative solutions to the table as well. Everything revolves around successful passing of renewal and emergency levels, levies. <clears throat> now is the time to seek different opportunities, and this may be through a new set of eyes from outside our district. It is our responsibility as the Board of Education to do what is the very best for our community. I can appreciate that it's fearful of not having somebody at the wheel or turning it over to a potential interim. To not even attempt to interview and look for a new leader, in my opinion, is mismanagement on the Board of Education's part. Daryl Yader currently makes $178,000 a year plus allowances totaling over $200,000 a year. His salary clearly defines the position as an executive leadership role. I must ask, are we getting our money's worth with Daryl in this position? I personally think not. Our district has been plagued with poor leadership for many years. If you would like to see the efforts uh, we have been working on with Daryl, please request Daryl's last two evaluations, and this can be done by emailing Amy Wells and asking for public records requests stating what you would like a copy of. Whereas Daryl has been recognized as an excellent educator with his Milliken Award, his leadership skills have some area for development. A good leader has solid character, transparency, humility, 
that creates an environment that others want to follow. It is apparent that our district does not experience that type of leadership. This is based on much feedback that I received from staff as well as our community. The culture of any organization comes from the top down. The culture at Northwest Local drastically needs to change. Not all of this lies on Daryl's shoulders. However, it is Daryl's responsibility to develop and fix a broken culture. <clears throat> our biggest concern that needs to be addressed is student behavior and safety of our students and staff. This has been the Board of Education's front topic since the students returned from COVID. The board has asked for a zero tolerance environment that will protect students and staff. Little to no change has occurred. To speak to culture of the district's leadership, all of you know we are recently had a tragic assault on one of our educators. The building was in chaos due to the severity of the incident. Amidst this chaos, Mr. Yader was less than a mile away and he or any of his administrative team came to assist in managing the situation. This does not create a culture of trust in any fashion in any way. Northwest applied for a safety grant, which I believe was an ask of over $600,000. Nearly every school district around us received money upon submission of the application, uh, not Northwest local. Uh, when we required uh, to Daryl why we were passed up on, we were, the board was told, we, they usually don't tell you why. Weirdly enough, Mr. Heather tracked down the grant administrator. Uh, he was very forthcoming and shared uh, our Northwest local application. When the board reviewed the application, there were numerous errors on the application that was ridiculous. Mr. Heather also told, uh, told that we had errors, the er had the errors been fixed, quickly enough, we would have gotten the money during the first pass of the monies distributed. When we were passed over, how did our superintendent not wonder why his school district was the only one that didn't pass? This money was for the initiatives for the safety of our children. How is this not a priority when the safety of public schools is at its lowest it has ever been in the history of public education? Your Board of Education realizes the safety and discipline are one of the most critical issues we face. The board asked for a work session to get in front of our building leaders uh, to ask what the Board of Education can do through policy and support to assist them and their staff. This meeting ended up being a fabricated meeting that had a run through practice in particular staff making strategic comments to the Board of Education to steer all the conversations. How can we move the needle of our district when conversations are fabricated and rehearsed? Nicole touched on the handover results and uh, we have drastically failed the last two, heavy, two levies. This speaks to our community's belief and buy-in to our school district. We need, to, we need a fresh look at our district in conjunction with a plan that is sellable and agreeable to our community. Most of Daryl's professional career has been with Northwest Local and his exposure and experience has been here where we have, we, where we need more out of the box thinking and direction. Our district is in dire need of a course correction in many different areas. Continually doing the same things over and over and expecting a new or better outcome is a gamble we do not have the time or the money to gamble with. The board has been asking for stronger accountabilities at all levels. If our district is going to flourish to its greatest potential in accountability, we, it must be a working part of this equation. Lastly, this is now the second time our superintendent position has opened and we had the opportunity to truly search for a better leader of our district. This opportunity both times have been casted out by certain board members who have influenced others into reckless behavior. Could this just be me being upset? It's possibly, but this statement is true no matter how, what emotion was used to say it. The Board of Education has provided a disservice to our community, our staff and our students. We have settled. Daryl, if you stated that you love Northwest, if this is true, then the greatest gift that you can do for this district is to, find, to continue forward with your new opportunity and lead the district to find a new leader. I'd just like to say um, I made a comment at the North, when we had our board meeting at Northwest um, that I think Daryl is the, the, the man for the job. Um, he's shown it over the 25 years he's been in our district. Um, I said it back in January when I was the only one that wanted to keep Daryl. Um, I think it's the right thing to do. Um, Nancy, I, I, I couldn't say it much better with everything that you said. Um, and I just, it's obvious 
there's three of us that want him. There's two that, that don't. That's obvious by sitting out there listening. So I'm not going to take up any more time, but that's what I stand by what I said a month ago, and I stand by what I said back in January. student achievement yep yes, sir. yes um, we have some student achievements that are excellent we get to those here so we'd like to start out first um, with the student achievements we're going to start off, off with the area of academics and first we would like to recognize um, Northwest local school district wants to recognize 25 high school students who earned an advanced plus score on Ohio's end of the year course exam for geometry Advanced Plus is the highest performance level and rating only for students who are taking the exam a year or more ahead of their peers due to a single subject or whole grade acceleration. At Corina High School, we have 15 students whose names are up on the board, and at Northwest High School, we had nine students who achieved this. So that's a wonderful advancement, and we're very proud of them. Um, next, we have Montford Heights Elementary School. And Montford Heights would like to recognize eight fifth graders who maintained a perfect GPA throughout the school year of 4.0. They earned the Gold Presidential Award for this accomplishment, and we congratulate them as well. Um, next, we have Pleasant Run Elementary School. And Pleasant Run Elementary would like to celebrate 44 students who earned advanced scores, those are scores greater than 700, on both, the math, on both math and English language arts for the Ohio State tests. That is uh, 15 third graders, fourth, uh, 17 fourth graders, and 12 fifth graders. So that looks excellent, and there are certainly achievements like that will help improve our report card score. Um, hopefully we'll see some better results come this September. Um, our next area is athletics. And Northwest High School would like to recognize Marquise Andrews and Andon Felix for their selection to the Southwest Ohio Football Coaches Association All-Star Team. They competed against the Miami Valley Football Association All-Star Team and, re and, re and reigned victorious with the 29 to 20 score. Um, next, we would like to uh, honor another Northwest High School student, Dayasia Cotton, for placing fourth in the high jump at the state track and field meet with a season best jump of five feet, six inches. Um, this, uh, this ranking of fourth place this year beat her fifth place ranking last year. She has a bright future ahead of her. Um, next, Cool Rain, uh, middle school would like to, re to recognize their male athlete of the year and that is Andre Burks Jr. Andre participated in football, wrestling, and track. He is a two-time state qualifier in the Greater Miami Conference Wrestling Champ. So congratulations to Andre. And in our last area we will go to Fine Arts and in Fine Arts Corain High School would like to congratulate 33 students from the Corain High School Art Club and the Hope Squad who participated in murals with a mission this is a social or this is a special partnership with the Cincinnati Reds and PNC Bank to elevate positive messages for the student community. They were honored at the May 25th Reds game. Uh, and that's all our accomplishments for today. Congratulations to all those students. Um, I was at the high school when the Reds came to present that and it was um, at a pep rally and the students were very excited to uh, to see that and to have that presented at the school. Butler Tech update? The only thing is uh, our three building projects, they are progressing and I'll have more updates once they break ground and pictures and that stuff. And then we'll have um, Mr. Graff will come and give a report. Okay. Thank you. Legislative update? Um, Nicole, the uh, Ohio legislature is on, on leave for the, I'm not sure how much of the summer, but uh, there's nothing going on right now. Uh, did want to mention a um, couple things. Um, perhaps the most liberal school district in the United States, that being Los Angeles, um, their school board has voted to ban during the school day, um, the entire school day, the use of cell phones, and to tie in with that, the Surgeon General is deemed that social media can be dangerous to one's health. Um, sort of like what they did with cigarettes um, back in the 60s. 
They put the little warning label on the boxes and ultimately led to no advertising. Um, I have patients that are addicted to the internet and as much as I can't leave home without it, um, I think some people just don't know when enough is enough. And I think we're seeing, you hear all these commercials on young people and their mental health, and I am absolutely convinced working in psychiatry that um, a lot of it ties into social media. There's a lot of good that comes from it, but there's a lot of bad, and that would be it. Thank you. Reports from employee organizations? I don't believe we have any tonight. Oh. Oh. Dave and, and Brad? Yeah, I guess we have two. Good evening. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of the teachers of the Northwest School District. We want the Board of Education to know that we support and encourage them as they begin their momentous task of hiring a new superintendent. While change is often challenging, teachers perceive new leadership will bring a noteworthy ideas, noteworthy work ideas to address the demanding issues that the district is facing as society and education evolves through this post-pandemic world. We teachers are optimistic the Board of Education will seize this opportunity to refresh the district, and we ask that you choose a candidate that is best represents the following characteristics. First, they must be a listener and highly visible and representative. Teachers have not always felt or believed that they have been heard. Many have felt that their concerns, issues, and even solutions have not always been taken seriously by those in leadership positions. Having a superintendent who is present and open to dialogue will create a working relationship between the superintendent and teachers that may eliminate the us and them mindset that has troubled the district and possibly impeded solutions. Next, exceptional communication skills are a priority in our new superintendent. As we know, news travels quickly, and as it does, the message changes just as fast. Having open communication with staff so that everyone knows what is happening is important to staff members when the message is not delivered to everyone or information happens in waves, staff members often hear inaccurate information results, which results in miscommunication and misunderstandings of what is happening in the district. At this critical juncture, the district requires a superintendent that understands that discipline is not synonymous with punishment, but rather is an investment in creating a culture where students are able to develop and practice self-restraint and self-control in order to establish an environment where everyone feels safe and respected and therefore are able to teach and learn in a setting that avoids contention and promotes the well-being of all. Punishment is reactionary. We need a superintendent who can help us learn to be proactive and preventative while holding staff and students accountable for their choices. Finally, the new superintendent should understand that less is more. In the world of education, there's always a new program or initiative that promise to promises to revolutionize the way things are done. The problem is that every new initiative requires time. Time for staff to learn, time to be implemented with students, and time for it to work its magic. And for, unfortunately, that kind of time is rare, if ever given before the next new initiative comes along and is assigned to everyone while the previous initiatives fall by the wayside, leaving people feeling that they have wasted their time. Our new superintendent should be one who honors that time commitment and encourages teachers to honor, to hone their skills before instituting the next best thing, creating teachers who are good at some techniques instead of empowering them to be exceptional at a few. Remember, when a teacher is exceptional, they teach exceptionally. With all that has transpired in the world over the past several years, the educational environment is vastly different and rapidly changing. The teachers know that the Board of Education are tasked with an immense decision to choose a new superintendent. However, we encourage you to draw upon the strengths of the district's 100 year history and choose a new superintendent who will guide us to the next century with dignity, integrity, and excellence as has been our tradition. Thank you. Thank you.
Hey guys. Hey Brad. Brad Watkins, proud director of special education for the school district for what, approximately the next, I don't know, 15 days or so. Um, you know, I'm not looking for, this is a heavy meeting, let's call it out. Um, I'm not looking for a Jerry Maguire moment or anything like that um, where I don't share some of the opinions of the five of you this evening. Um, I respect each and every one of you immensely for the dedication that you have to this community and your constituents and the monumental task you have uh, ahead of you. Um, I spent nine, year, nine years in Northwest Local School District. Um, you've given me a, a great deal of professional support, personal support along the way, and I've proudly served alongside some tremendous leaders. And um, I currently am, am serving alongside a tremendous leader. Um, there are gonna be some other comments made this evening, and I, I recognize that, I understand. And it's certainly not uh, on my heart to, to cause any type of ruckus as I move on. Um, but I, I do feel it is on my heart to, to share with you that this district has, in my opinion, a, a compassionate, um, humble, and selfless leader um, that serves tirelessly each and every day. Um, and, and leaders make mistakes. No one's perfect. But you know what you do when someone makes a mistake is is you get alongside and you work with. And that's the kind of leadership he's had, an impact he's had on me. Um, as I've made mistakes as building principal, as an athletic director, as an assistant principal, and I wasn't in the position very long as special education director, but I, we're doing all right. Uh, but I, I just want you to hear it from a, a, somebody that's been kind of in, in various roles in the district in the last nine years and to see some previous leadership. Uh, Daryl gets it. Daryl gets it. So, Look, again, not looking for the Jerry Maguire moment. I appreciate everything you guys have, have given me as a, as a district. Um, certainly lifelong friendships and, and uh, memories that I've made with my family in my nine years here. Um, I, I look back upon this, this chapter in my life very fondly. Um, and I wish you nothing but the best. I don't want you to hear that very sincerely. Uh, but I know that you have a tremendous team sitting up here and back there and um, I would just wish everybody the best so thank you for the opportunity to speak and thank you for the last nine years thanks Brad. best thank of luck you. to you too Brad any other employees uh, community comments Brad, do it again. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, community comments. Um, we do have two. I would just like to remind everyone um, that you are given three minutes and uh, no response uh, from the board will be given as the community members speak. Um, and the first person is uh, Carrie Rovers.
Good evening. My name is Carrie Roberts, and for the last 22 years, I have served a significant role in every levy campaign that the district has put on the ballot. For the last seven years, I've been the leader of the Community Partners for Education. This is a PAC that was set up roughly 20 plus years ago to fundraise and execute levy campaigns in the Northwest Local School District. I attended Montfort Heights White Oak and graduated from Colerain, as did my husband and two of our four children. I have been a huge, huge supporter of our schools, staff, and community my entire life. In recent days, I have received many concerned phone calls from teachers, administrators, and community members about what is happening in our district. It is my understanding that our superintendent resigned, giving the board an opportunity to hire new leadership. Our board advertised the superintendent position for only five days, where most super positions are posted for a month. There were seven candidates for the position, and not all were interviewed. Three of the board members decided that there were, quote unquote, no better options, so they would offer Mr. Yader his position back with an extension. This decision by three board members was agreed to after all five members had signed off on less than stellar evaluations of the superintendent in January of 2023 and March of 2024. Because I know that the district has a lot of gossip, and with Jim being on vacation, I opted to reach out to Mr. Heather. This was after many discussions. Following some discussion with Mr. Heather, he informed me that he and Dr. Slattery were voting with Mr. Detzel, and it would be a 3-2 vote. Mr. Heather went on to say, Carrie, you know that Jim and I rarely see eye to eye. Jim is a big fan of Mr. Yader. He has convinced both of us that we are in a bad situation and this is the only option. It may not be ideal, but it's where we are. It will definitely be a 3-2 vote. As I mentioned, all five board members signed off on the last two evaluations in 2023 and 2024. I will let the evaluations speak for themselves. These are excerpts from the evaluation signed by all five board members in January of 2023. These were obtained via public records request from someone using an anonymous name as my request from June 18 has not even yet been acknowledged. This past, th these are the board members' words. This past year, an incident occurred regarding a safety grant that NWLSD was passed over on due to an incomplete application. This was presented to the board by a current board member. The board feels had this not been presented to Daryl, there is a very good chance we would never been informed of the mishap. To many, if not all of us, this was a gross oversight and honestly a near terminable offense. We will let Daryl and his team investigate the situation and actions were taken. The question left to the board is would we ever have been made aware of this? We need to trust that we will be informed and that Daryl's team will be held accountable. There is a very high bar set for all NWLSD staff. That same consideration has to be made for Daryl's cabinet and leadership team. The second excerpt from that same evaluation is the overall morale of the district is very low. The following obtained via the same records request signed, these were, the following statements were from a records request from signed in March of 2024, just 91 days ago. Lots of division in the district. DY seems to be only, seems to only involve the Board of Education on peripheral ideas and doesn't really treat the board as part of the district team. Academic success has been very limited based on comparison statistics. Mass, a great concern is mass exodus within our district. Many Carrie. staff members are withdrawing their children Carrie. and enrolling them in private education. Carrie. Sorry, I gotta ask you to wrap it up because it's been over three minutes. Can, uh, then I'll just, can I just read my last sure. paragraph? That's a shame because there's also, in, in the same thing, there are two years of exit interviews from employees that, you know, are not great. But on a personal level, I, appre I appreciate Daryl's years of service to our district. I have worked alongside him for many a campaign. He worked hard, he was smart, and enjo I enjoyed the opportunity to get to know him better. As a leader of Community Partners for Education, an organization that fights for support, funding, and positive outcomes for the district, I have to put personal feelings aside. This community is speaking and I must listen. This district is begging for a different style of leadership. Currently, the district and community voices are loud. The voices are bold and the voices are ready for change. We have seen your signatures on the evaluation and we saw you take steps toward change. Why the sudden about face? As one of the loud and boy and bold voices that continually supported this district, no matter its challenges, I can no longer raise my voice, 
voice in support of a district that takes three steps back before it even took a full step forward. I implore you as elected board members to listen to the community that voted you into your positions. They are being loud and bold in declaring that they want change. Your agenda should not be personal. It should be what is best for the district. I believe it was Albert Einstein that said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. When leaving our district, a six to 10 year employee said it best, I really do hope change is coming because these students and amazing staff deserve so much better. Sandy Petro, thank you. Honestly, I don't wanna be here. I don't even wanna speak, but I do feel it's necessary. I'm here as a voice for the community and the Northwest staff that are fearful of retaliation if they speak their thoughts. I began in this district in 1985 with a kindergartner at Coleraine Elementary. My three kids went through Coleraine Elementary, Coleraine Middle, and Coleraine High School. My daughter, an educator, started her student teaching through, Col through Weigel and ended up with a job. She spent nearly 20 years with this district, save a couple of years when she went um, to another opportunity as an assistant principal. This district has an image that is less than favorable. The public has spoken loud and clear that there's no confidence in the administration. The district is in desperate need of a hard reset. When the superintendent gave his resignation, an opportunity to turn the district around came to fruition. Applicants submitted their information, but no interviews were arranged because, and I'm quoting board member Chris Heather in writing, at this point, there are three solid votes to keep him. Not only are they keeping him, but intentions of giving him a raise and, raise and extending his contract to three more years to his retirement date are also on the table. Why not interview those applicants? Heather states, time is of the essence. Many district staff disagree. The staff administrators, students, families, stakeholders, and community deserve someone who will think forward. Someone who will turn Northwest into a district that not only retains their families, but attracts families. Someone who will step up when there is a very public event that happens, such as the tragedy that occurred in January at Coleraine High School. Someone who will value their staff. Someone who will listen to the public. Someone who will be empathetic to concerns of staff and students. Someone who will address behavioral issues and policy. Someone who makes an honest effort to be visible at events and talk comfortab comfortably to parents in the community. Daryl Yader has been nothing but very kind and professional to me. Personally, I like him. I even consider him a friend and I want the very best for him. However, I also want the best for the kids in this district. My read on public confidence is the district needs a drastic change in leadership to turn around the community. I have the evaluations, I'm not worried about posting them and will request feedback from the community so you can all see what the community actually says. I'm begging the board members to please rethink this decision and interview at least those, those candidates. My granddaughter deserved better. My own daughter deserved better. And the families that entrusted you with the power to make a change in their best interest deserves better. Thank you. Hey, Nicole, um, I know we don't respond, but just for the record, nope, so it's no actually. No responding to you. Well, you can say it, save it for your, your okay. uh, board I'll, I'll member know. comments. All right, so we will move into the consent items. We'll start with HR. Good evening. We seek your approval for the following 13 resignations, one revised date, four change in status, 32 initial appointments various supplemental items, and the approval of HR handbooks. We have a few contracts for your approval tonight. We have two non-public contracts, five special education, and one for Huntington. With that, the superintendent recommends the board approve the adoption of the consent items as listed. So moved. Second. Any discussion? How are we on? Um, positions right now so um, we currently have 16 point certified positions remaining to fill in 23 classified okay 
and we had a hiring fair recently. We've had two hiring okay. events. Thank you for asking. And um, we just onboarded 40 new employees this past week. We also have our drive a bus hiring event mm -hmm. on um, Wednesday, the 26th. So if you would all like to come, we would love to have you. Um, hopefully we will get some drivers who are a little bit apprehensive about what driving a bus is like, and they'll be able to have the opportunity to drive in a very controlled fashion mm -hmm. after signing a waiver um, in the Taylor parking lot. How exciting. I'll be there to drive. I wish I could. I'll be out of town that day or I will be there. <laughs> the open sure. positions that are open now, how is that in comparison to, say, last year? So um, if you walk into the HR office, you can see two big charts, one from last year, one from this year. We're about neck and neck as to where we were last year. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good evening. Um, first, I'd like to ask the board to dispense with reading of the uh, June 3rd regular board meeting minutes and the June 10th special meeting board minutes, as well as our financial report for the month of May. Our all funds balance was $92.8 million. Our general fund unreserved balance is $35.5 million. Our revenues through the month of May was $109 million, or 99% of our uh, estimate. And our expenditures were $122 million, or at 90% of our target estimate from our forecast. Our investment weighted average return is 4.65%. And the list of monthly bills, we have our routine monthly bills, as well as debt interest payments that are due in May each year. We have some AP test payments, custodial supplies, bus repair, literacy subscriptions, um, building design work, our weight cross payment, and some auxiliary and grant fund payments. We also have our fund to fund transfers for the year. This is to pay for our um, fee waivers. And we have the records retention schedule that the Ohio uh, Historical Connection revised in the month of May. So with that, I ask the board to approve the fiscal consent items as listed. I need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Any discussion? On the, um, the fund to fund transfers and everything that you're doing this year, any surprises compared to last year or does everything seem to be um, similar? Similar. It's based on the school fee waivers that have been <coughs> mm -hmm. submitted. So not everything is, those stay pretty Consistent. much the same. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. We have an approval of some other items. We have our handbooks and fees. This is our list of um, pretty much all of the handbooks and our student fees for next school year. They were presented as information at the last meeting, so they're on here for approval. I recommend the board approve the 24-25 handbooks and fees as listed. Any motion and a second? So moved. Second. Any questions? Passes five to zero, thank you. For this, we have our insurance renewal. This is for our general liability, auto, property, and cyber insurance. Superintendent recommends the board approve the renewal of the insurance policies for the Northwest Local Schools effective July 1, 2024, with the proposed premium charges as listed. We have a motion and a second. So moved. Second. So with it being fiscal year end, uh, I ask that the board approve the year end advances from the general fund to our grant funds um, that will be advanced 
now to close the books and then advance back in the month of July when we open uh, fiscal year 25. So with that, I ask the board to approve the advances from the general fund as listed. So moved. Second. Any questions? Okay. So as we gear up for fiscal year 25, I ask the board to accept, approve, and appropriate new funds for fiscal year 25. This is to set up our grant funds as well as our freshman class funds. With that I ask the board to approve, accept, and appropriate the funds for fiscal 25. Okay. Need a motion and a second, please. Moved. So moved. Second. Nancy already. Oh, I didn't hear. Oh, sorry, I did speak loud. No, you're good. Apologize. I heard you. Thank you. Passes five to zero. So next, I have a resolution for the deposit of public funds. I recommend that the Board of Education approve uh, designating uh, PNC Bank as our depository for our public funds. You need a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Five to zero. Okay, we, we also have uh, our final permanent appropriations at 166 million uh, for fiscal year 24 as we close our books. So I ask the board to approve the final fiscal 24 permanent appropriation resolution as listed. Okay, need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Thank you. So the next okay. item is recognition of booster and support organizations. In January, when we approved the booster and support organizations, we had some that had been out of compliance. We gave a six-month extension for them to work to become in compliance. There is a policy that outlines these PTA and booster organizations exist in support of the district, so there is a relationship there. And so it has some requirements in terms of reporting that they have to the district because of just that relationship. It does not give the district the ability to micromanage their funds, to tell them what to do, but just to help maintain compliance with all of the legal things that they need to do from a organi support organization. At that point, we had quite a few um, organizations that were not in compliance. We're down to three that are not in compliance, so this would suspend them as of now. Um, Jamie Parker from the Finance Office works tirelessly with each of these organizations. They are volunteer organizations, and so a lot of the stuff she works with them to try to get um, for them off of the auditor site and then work with them on maintaining that compliance. She is continuing to work with them. Our principals are the, ident the key person to make sure that relationship and that compliance stays. So they are obviously continuing to work with their organizations to get in compliance. So once the organizations are back in compliance, we're hoping that um, before we get to the end of July, we can get them where they need to be so that they can be reinstated before school starts and they can do all the great things they do to support our staff and our schools. So with that, um, the superintendent recommends the board recognize the additional boosters and support organizations as listed so that we, they can maintain their compliance. Need a motion and a second. So moved. <clears throat> second. And just so to be clear, it's not that there's any wrongdoing by the folks. No. It's just that there's a lot of compliance uh, documents, bank uh, paperwork, things Agendas, that have to be turned yeah. in, minutes and all that. So 
um, yeah. those are that's how they get registered. Yeah, we're just working to get a lot them. of work. Yeah, there's a lot of paperwork. We have a couple of items for information tonight. We have the textbook <laughs> adoption for grade five science. Um, this is being brought by curriculum. So um, we had the resources out for review tonight for anyone who was here. Teachers were heavily involved in deciding which resource that they were recommending. So that will come in July for approval. We also have the new middle school elective courses for Transitions Academy. So as we continue to expand Transitions Academy, um, we have the need to create some additional courses for them, especially as they um, start to embody a, a more online presence. Those will come back next time for um, a vote as well. And then finally, we have our semi-annual harassment, intimidation, and bullying report. This is one of those compliance things that we have to bring and publicly share. Um, the numbers on there look small. What I want to clarify every time we do this, we clarify. These represent the formal complaints that have been um, brought to the administration of the school through the formal complaint process that's outlined in the handbook. There are conflicts that happen on a daily basis in our buildings that our counselors and our administrators resolve on a daily basis. All of those are not accounted in this report. This is literally just the formal complaints that have been filed. So again, those numbers are there. It's by building and it's whether or not there was a complaint and whether it was verified or not. So those, I just wanna clarify, although the numbers look small, they don't represent the, um, the scope of what our buildings do on a daily basis to support kids and families. So for the update, just want to give a couple of things. Um, obviously, Corian Elementary is a big topic that we continue to talk about. So um, we've been working with the architects and engineers. Um, we are working on a way that we can stabilize some of the facade so that we are able to continue to use the building. Um, in the short term, we obviously, it's a touch and go situation. Um, we are confident that we're gonna be able to start the year there. Um, we are still looking at options if something happens. We do not, we, the situation we do not want to have happen is we do not want to have a mid-year building shift where we're moving kids and staff throughout the middle of the year. So as um, Chris works through this with his team and in co collaboration, we are trying to make sure that as we build some remediation efforts that we can be assured that we can get through the full year. So those are in process now. We also have Corrine Middle School, if anyone's driven by there recently, the facade at the very top that we've talked about having to pin up multiple times, that has had to come down. So um, you'll notice that the top of the building is missing now at the very front, that parapet, and down to the upper windows of the third floor, or the second floor, and that's gonna be kind of remediated because those bricks were not safe either so we've had multiple issues that we've been dealing with with those two campuses but we are confident and hopeful that we'll have the things in place that we'll be able to start the school year it's just not going to be pretty the building's not going to look great and it's not a long-term solution so um, we also have with the board passing the resolution to enter into the CFAP agreement um, that is now in the state's court so they have a commission meeting coming up in July so once they approve the resolution that we've sent to them, that will formalize our process with Corrine Elementary. So a lot of moving parts still out there, but we are continuing to work diligently on remediating Corrine Elementary for the fall. Have we stayed in contact with them to ensure that they're not going to back out on the agreement? Yes. Yeah, so we've made sure that they have everything they need and they've assured us that they're just waiting for the July 11th commission meeting and that it's a formality and that it is, the money is, is allocated for us.
waiting for Nicole to move on. Um, first thing I wanted to say was just for the record, Sandy and Sandy. This isn't board member comments. This is your motion. Oh, okay. All right. Well, waiting for some direction. Um, it's your thing. I'd like to make a motion, um, which has sort of been the central issue here tonight, that this Board of Education approve Daryl Yader's superintendent, con superintendent contract with a wage freeze for <clears throat> this upcoming first year of the contract, uh, extending the contract from July 1st, 2024 to July 31st, 2027. So moved. Second. Mr. Detzel? Aye. Mrs. Slattery? Aye. Mrs. Talby? No. Mr. Gilbert? No. Mr. Heather? Aye. Nicole, with that said, if you don't mind, I'd like to say something. Of course. So when I made the decision to go back to HR, um, it was with a heavy heart, but it was with my goal of supporting the district. There are a lot of challenges facing our district. Um, when I think about what Dave said that the teachers are looking for, um, I believe I am open and listening. I do communicate. Um, I appreciate what Dave said about discipline being an uh, investment in culture and a proactive strategy. Um, less is more, I agree with him. We've been trying to minimize any district level initiatives we can't control a lot of the things the state is throwing at us, which they continue to do. Um, one of the things that um, is important to me is the district. I care deeply about the kids, the staff, and the families of this district. I've spent over 20 years in different leadership positions supporting this district. Um, I know there is clamoring for change. Change does take time. And I believe that the one plan that we have landed on is leading us in that direction. In fact, the advisory committee that I created with, I have a parents, I have a student advisory committee, I have a teacher advisory committee to make sure that people have voice. Um, I asked the principals to put teachers on my committee that are not the yes people, they're not the BLT members, they're not the union people. They are the voices in the building that everybody follows no matter what position they have the people on that committee greatly changed what our one plan looks like. Their voice completely shifted what the entire plan was around the discipline component of that plan, and their voice is rewrote basically that part of it. So giving that voice to our teachers and our staff is a critical component for um, how to move the district forward. I know as a leader I will never make everyone happy. That. I am gonna be the one that has to make difficult decisions that sometimes are hard for people to swallow, um, but they might be the right thing. This for me is not about taking the district backwards. Um, I've been here, I know where we've been, I know where we are, and I believe we have a solid vision for the future. And the leadership that I commit to bring is not about taking the district backward, bringing back yesterday, but about moving us boldly into a future that takes us beyond where we've been, but to where we need to be. And so my commitment is to do that through a collaborative process. Sometimes that collaborative process means that we slow down and it's not an immediate stomp my feet, yell, and do it. It's a collaborative process to make sure that we have voices heard. And it's about hearing all of our voices, not just responding to a small group of people, but making sure that I take the time to really find all of those pockets of people and make sure that their voice is as considered as the people who are loud, and showing up and committed. We need more people to be loud, showing up and committed. And so my commitment is to continue to do that. 
I do want to call out one thing, though. Levies have been brought up multiple times. During the last year when those levies were on the ballot, the auditor state released additional guidance that limited what um, administrators, especially treasurers and superintendents, can do. We can no longer campaign. We can no longer go out and crowd the corner. We can no longer go out and convince people to vote for that. We can go out and educate people. The auditor has made it very clear that the community and the board are the people responsible for passing the levy. I will never stop educating, talking to, and communicating with people about the needs, the resources, and supporting this district. But I agree, it's going to take a collective agency of everyone involved. And we're going to have to come together, disagree at times, but do it without being disagreeable. A wise person says that a lot. Mr. Gilbert, and that we need to make sure that we can bring people together. So I commit to doing the work that needs to be done to bring people together, to listen to voices, to respond, and to move the district forward. So I know that there are questions. As a reflective leader, I will always continue to reflect, grow, and improve as I would expect any leader, teacher, or student in this district to do the same thing. And I do not hold myself higher than anyone else and would not expect myself to do any less than anyone else. So I will continue to embody that humility. And I do not take this responsibility lightly. It is a huge responsibility to do what's right for the district, sometimes in the face of opposition. But I will continue to take that with humility, with compassion, and with listening ears to make sure that we hear everyone, but at the end of the day, we make a decision. We can communicate that and move forward, and we can continue to make this the destination district where staff are proud to be, families are happy to have their kids, and we can continue to build that image that Northwest had when I came here, and that needs to be something that we don't just bring back yesterday, we envision a bolder, brighter tomorrow and I commit to do that with the board and with all of our employees. Thank you. Board member comments? Yes? Yeah. Um, just a, a minor thing here. Uh, Sandy, we do appreciate all you do with the boosters. Um, that's a tough job. Uh, it's something that I've done a lot of the booster presidents, but just for the record, we, you know, you did indicate that we didn't interview anybody and it was public record that we had an executive session and we did, in fact, interview somebody. And um, um, uh, we um, were excited about a possibility of an experienced person coming in. Uh, then the person withdrew. And one of the key points, and you can do a records request for this because he did it via email. Um, the thing that he said is it's imperative in his opinion that we bring in somebody who understands the inner workings of this district and that's what really really convinced me uh, to bring in somebody who doesn't know the culture you saw see Daryl's understanding so I just wanted to set the record straight on that um, secondly um, I've been on and off the board since 20 geez it's been I guess 2001 and um, did take six years off and then two years off. Um, but there's been many times when I've been on the four to one or three to two side. Uh, it was my 50th birthday when we hit the big boat on um, transportation. And it was a near riot in here. I don't know if anybody remembers that, but we had 100 people in here, probably 50 out there and 50 outside the window. Fire department was called, it was crazy, and I remember it because it was my 50th birthday. And it was a three to two vote. And board members were displeased with one another for that night. But then we made up because it's not in the best interest of this uh, school district or this board of education to hold grudges and um, try to get back. So I just urge the board members that you know the vote's been made um, we go forth in a positive way and let's make next year better than 
any year we've had, and that's it, Nicole. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank everybody that got up and spoke. Obviously, I don't agree with some of you, some I do, and I did not convince anyone to vote for Daryl. I stayed, made my statement back in January, and a month ago at Northwest High School, I thought he was the right person for the job. I never contacted any board member to try and convince them to vote for him. I told them what I thought, and that's that. Um, you know, I, I think our biggest problem is these renewal levies. I said it when we were at Northwest for the board meeting that we have two of these, and if we don't pass these levies, we're going to be $25 million in the hole, and we're going to be like our neighbors in Mount Healthy taken over by the state. If this doesn't resonate with the community, I don't know what does. It's the most important thing. I'm not saying superintendent or the treasurer is not important for the board. These levies are paramount. And if you think that you know better, I'm not kidding. You can ask the treasurer what happens when you don't have enough money to run a school district. So the community needs to focus on these renewal levies and get the community involved to try and get these passed because I, I know it's in 2027, that's going to be here like that. So I just want to just re reiterate that, that, in my opinion, that is my main goal to get those levies passed because we need that to keep this school district running. Um, and if you want to contact the Community Partners for Education, feel free. We can use all the help. Um, I've been a member of that for, I don't know, 22 years, and I've worked on every levy in the last 30 years, so I know what it takes. It takes hard work, and it's going to take the community to pass it. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I'm just going to say I really miss the student presentations tonight because they're usually the highlight, and I really miss seeing them. I would also like to say out of this uh, six that we did not interview, Four of them list, did not list superintendent experience. One of the online questions is, how many years of experience do you have in these different categories? Four of them listed no years of superintendent experience. One of them had misspelled words on their application, and the other one didn't bother to proofread their resume and still had themselves listed as working at a job in the district that they haven't even been at in years. So there are, there are reasons that we may have chosen not to interview some of these people. Uh, the next thing I'd like to say is nobody up here is my spokesperson. Chris is not my spokesperson. If you want to know what I think about something or what my opinion is, then you ask me. Second I want to say is Jim Detzel and I had a one-minute phone conversation. He convinced me of nothing. I agree with his statement. He convinced me of nothing. I'm quite capable of making my own decisions and looking at things and deciding what I want to do. So I support Daryl. I think it may be great if Daryl got the had a, a assistant superintendent to work with him. It's a very large district with with a lot of issues. Maybe it's too much for one person to cover. I also admire that he can sit here and listen to people tear his reputation down when he's done an outstanding job for 20 plus years and he's been working very hard. I hope to God that everybody else doesn't get vilified for every mistake they make because we all make mistakes. He's acknowledged the mistake and he's made changes. And I think that's the, the sign of growth. Somebody can call you out for a mistake, you can acknowledge it, and you can make changes. And I think that's what we should be looking for. Now, if we told Daryl we didn't like this and he made no changes, well then, yeah, I think we need to look for somebody else. But that's not the experience I've had with him. Thank you. I think enough's been said. Um, I'd like to thank Carrie, Sandy, Dave, and Brad for uh, getting up and speaking. Um, and I just want to say that I will continue to be a very active and diligent school board member um, working to ensure that every student in our district uh, succeeds and will continue to support the staff that's here. Um, I will continue to support Daryl, uh, wish him nothing but success. Um, I, I know that he is a hard worker and that he um, takes to heart everything that was said here tonight and that he will uh, give 100% to the district. So I appreciate that. And um, that's all. Thank you. 
We need a motion and a second to adjourn. So yeah. moved. Second. Right. I heard Chris and Jim. Did you get that, Amy? Yeah, this is five to zero. Thank you.